2023, arrived at the Big E train show in West Springfield, Massachusetts. Look forward to this event all throughout the year, at least the latter part of the year and into January. It's like Christmas after Christmas. And happily, the weather is warm. It's gonna be in the 40s today. Not a speck of snow to be seen anywhere. A lot of times I've come to this place over the years and froze to death. I had to run between the buildings. Well, there are four buildings that the show is in and the largest one is the one I'm about to enter, the Better Living Center. There's uh, the Young Building and a couple of others. I plan on visiting all the buildings and showing you some of the highlights in each. All right, just getting started today. First customer is Ron's Books. They specialize in railroad DVDs and they got tons of books of all kinds. I got a few. A couple of RF&P books in uh, Trackside in Western New York, 95 to 2017. Very good people to deal with. Ella, the owner, is a super nice woman. It's a family-owned business. And I've uh, been doing business with them for years. Just a small sampling. And this book I just picked up. You name it. It's here. few people who love this railroad. Mono railroads are the rule of thumb in this place. This is only one of seemingly thousands of them here. And with a little bit of luck, I hope to buy a mono railroad locomotive and join a mono railroad club. So if I buy a locomotive, I think I'm pretty much committed to the club. And these are New England railroads here. Boston and Maine, the Housatonic, Norfolk Southern High Hoods. Here's the Amherst Belt Lines layout with their Vermont Railway painted Jeeps. Yeah, look how enormous this Better Living Center facility is. It's the largest of the four buildings that they use. It's like a Boston and Maine East 7 in the Minuteman paint scheme. Look at this CSX lash up. GE's. The 1776, which I saw at Iona Island in uh, October. <coughs> and the 3194 honoring uh, our law enforcement. Dig this winter scene on the same layout. National SD 40 2 sitting here, too. Oh, get the meat, get the meat. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> Actually, we're, my son and I were talking about doing a module that, you know, spring, summer, winter, fall. <laughs> I like the weather today, though. Yeah. yeah. Man, I've been froze to death up here. Yeah. You don't get that Saskatchewan effect. <laughs> I think there's, there's a vendor that comes here. He's from Edmonton. Yeah, he might be here. Huh. An F40 PH-2 from the MBTA. 
pulling cars that they don't even have. These are New Jersey Transit style double deckers, not the ones that they have. Those heavyweights. I feel a little painful for the engineer to run a train like that with that F40 pointed backwards. All right, they have a special. Buy five shirts and get the 613. Well, they got a lot. Got some skull caps too that are pretty cool. Sienna, I like that one. Should buy that for the Flying Yankee. <laughs> Let's see. There's a lot of things that the Flying Yankee would not buy here. Trust me. <laughs> that. Definitely that. And that. Even if you gave it to him for nothing, he wouldn't take it. <laughs> oh boy. There's some nice fallen flag shirts here. Benzie, New Haven, Dash and Commuter, even have New York and Atlantic. Wow. Here Lackawanna, Flying Yankee would love that. Pittsburgh and Lake Erie. New York Central, Bessemer and Lake Erie. Buffalo Creek Railway. Not to be confused with the Buffalo Creek and Gawley in West Virginia. Reading. Mark. That's a really Santa Fe. Sharp looking stuff. Yeah, thoroughbred railroad models has some good stuff. Some NSGMs. General Electrics. Ah! SD70 Mac, they look like. SD60M, former Conrail. They got the war bonnet painted SD75Ms, but I prefer the with Santa Fe lettering than the BNSF lettering. So, there's an SD45 2 there, former Conrail. I'm trying to find the right combination of a locomotive. Something that's uh, DC equipped so I can have locks sound put in or one that's already equipped But I want to have the right railroad and the right locomotive type. I don't want any general electrics What I'm looking for is like maybe a Conrail GP40-2 or a Union Pacific SD70M or an SD40-2 See I see some heritage units here I see it I'll see what what it's equipped with I may get it with the sound or I might get it where sound will be added with a decoder well, there's a nice end gauge layout B&O painted sunburst GP30s well, there's the Central Vermont Railway Historical Society that was a great little railroad an arm of the Canadian national system and they have their little magazine the Ambassador. The Ambassador was a daytime passenger train from New York to Montreal. Used the CV part of the way. Used the B&M and the New Haven and Canadian National also. Well, that's a 2017 calendar. Nice photographs, but it's free. They have a lot of Conrail blue clothing with the predecessor railroad logos on them. CNJ, PRR, Lehigh Valley, New York Central. Nice looking jackets. As well as the mugs. Conrail books. Here's the Boston and Maine Railroad Historical Society. A lot of B&M books. Old and new. Covers Guilford. Interesting photographs in these books. This is just one building out of four. And you can see this is huge. They got all kinds of train stuff in here like you would not believe. These monstrosities are Bachmans. Huge. Probably get a hernia lifting up one of these. They look nice, but they're all GEs. Ah. They got one General Motors unit here happily. GP40-2. These are Bachmans. 
Here are some Charger locomotives and a variety of paint schemes. Behind the queen. Uh, the veterans unit. I've been inside that engine in Scranton. Love those engines. The ACS 64s. Former Conrail Dash 8 40 CW. Painted into NS colors. And a variety of GG1s. That one, but which is the one that you like? Doesn't really yeah, look authentically like painted. It doesn't have ditch lights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Conrail SD40-2 looks good. So these are the ones doesn't have good. ditch lights though. Yeah. So here's an HO model of the new Via Siemens Charger locomotives. They just put those Via train sets in the service. They look really sharp, those things. Yeah, outside is nice and pleasant outside. It's very real. Oh, that's what I'd like to do. Boy, I'll show them a thing or two when I blow that whistle. <laughs> well, here's virtual rail fan. You can watch trains all over the country from your living room. Edaville Railroad, I think that's where that steam engine comes from. That's in Eastern Massachusetts. So, kids want to go in there and blow that whistle. We're on board the steam engine. All right, I don't want to stay too long because other people want to come. Ring the bell first. You hear that? You know, we pulled out a couple times. All right, this is the way. If I was working on the railroad, this is the way I would blow it, but they won't let me blow it fully. So. Sounds cool, though. <laughs> well, now I'm in the Stroh building, S-T-R-O-H. Joe's McCompany has some interesting hats. Yeah, got some shirts. The Union Pacific stuff here. I see something. T-shirt, a little chilly for a T-shirt. Let's see, what do we got here? Atlantic Coastline, that looks sharp. You can see where the MBTA paint scheme was inspired from. <clears throat> Central of Georgia, looks good. Yeah, they, not much in the way of Union Pacific stuff. Well, let's see, there's more over here. Lehigh Valley, Monon, Milwaukee Road. Pacific, Chicago South Shore and South Bend Railroad, Savannah, Atlanta, oh here's something, Union Pacific Olympic Torch Relay, SD70M, a eh, little beyond my budget, $159.95, yeah. I'll do it when I win the lottery. Well, this is the Shephog Railroad Company, they got some interesting looking locomotives, Atlas, something it's like an SD this is an SD35 it's a Conrail engine SD35 yeah under $19.95 I guess it's not equipped with sound let's see what else they got GE stuff here. Yeah, they have interesting locomotives, but not really the type and the railroad that I want. Although that Boston and Maine Jeep 40 2 looked pretty good. DCC Ready, Atlas, Central New York Models. It's like an E7, Lightning Stripes. like the Empire State Express. That was an old New York to Cleveland train, I think. New York Buffalo. Now you're cooking with gas. These are Athern 
DCC quick plug equipped Union Pacific Fast 40. They were geared for 80 miles an hour. They were numbered in the 8,000s. And this is an SD45 from the Erie Lackawanna. Also DCC quick plug equipped, built by Atheron. Those are the best ones I've seen so far. Question. When, yes. when you get a chance. I'm new in the model railroading. Yep. Tell me about this engine. How much is this? Is this uh this one equipped with sound? It's probably not. No, this is DC. It is 120 oh. right now. Alright. Now how does that work with putting sound in? You put a decoder in it? Yeah, it's a, it's a quick plug. So it's probably an eight pin in that one. It's just a quick plug, the decoder will fit right in it. Would I get like authentic sound like what those engines sound like? You can put sound in it. Um you have to buy a sound decoder for it. Best bet for that would be like Yankee Dabbler. They sell the decoders right here if you want to do it while you're here. Wow. How much are the decoders? Sound decoders usually cheap ones you can get for 50, good high quality ones are 100 to 120. Wow. Well, I have people in the club, I think that can put that in for me. I know a guy that can do that. Let's see. But the price is good. And I love those engines. Love that railroad. So, you're going to take that? Let's see. Here's what I'm interested in getting here. UPS D70M with the flared radiator. No sound, but it's DCC ready. Looks sharp. Got ditch lights too, that's good. Have you told me to bring that? Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, let me just ask a few people what they think. Here's Leonard Gordy Railroadiana. I'm in the Young Building now. You see this, it looks like a train destination sign that might have been at South Station, Boston. There's all the stops going down to, I assume, Washington. Oh, okay. This is Bristol S-Gage Railroaders. Nice Lehigh Valley steamer there. Circus train. Here comes a Union Pacific Challenger with the elephant ear smoke deflectors on it. Most of those were used as passenger engines. Although they did use them in freight. I know the 800 class engines had the elephant ear smoke deflectors on them. Made them look a hell of a lot different than without them, but they look good either way, to tell you the truth. <coughs> There's a freight train with a Boston and Maine Minuteman red painted F7, it looks like. The Pennsylvania Railroad Caboose, interesting. Check this out. Napa Valley Wine Train FPA4, FPB4, the former Canadian National. Check out this GE Lasher. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, here's Neil. Hello, guys. And his wife, Sherry. And what's the name of your table? The Long Island chapter at the Pennsylvania Railroad Technical and Historical Society. Yeah, I think the Long Island had something to do with the Pennsylvania Railroad at one time. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, look at that. Still love those position light signals, and they still got a few, but they're disappearing slowly. Slowly. Yeah. So, feels like pre-pandemic Springfield here today. It does, yes. Oh. And yesterday though, yesterday though was a lot busier, but we still have we still have a good crowd uh, today. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yesterday was yeah. Today's Sunday, isn't it? I keep right. Forgetting. Yeah. <laughs> well, the ride up was a piece of cake. No, mm -hmm. no snow, no ice. Right. Nice and warm. Right. It's great. It's a little so, chill out there, but you know what? It's manageable. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yes. So, uh, who have you seen here today that you know? Let's see, John Paul, the uh, coast engineer was uh, here. Let's see who else was here. Uh, spaghetti and meatballs, uh, oh. 
Uh, our, our good old friend Spaghetti and Meatballs. Uh, let's see. Phantom Engineer, he's in the other building. Uh, who else did I see? A couple Barry? of guys. Yep. Yep, Phantom Engineer, he was around. So, yeah, we've had quite a few people. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. Well, it's only uh, 12 o'clock, so hopefully I'll run into them. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, uh, let's see. Uh, Spaghetti and Meatballs is here for the entire... Uh, for the entire uh, show. So uh -huh. is Phantom Engineer. Uh, also, Ghost Engineer, he was around before. So yeah, we've been seeing that around the people. Who's Phantom Engineer? Uh, one of the people from the railroad. Oh, I don't know him. Okay. That's okay. not that's not Jason Baxter, I know. No, that's not Baxter, no. The rookie. Right. Well, I call him the King of Queens. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, so, yeah, well. Well, he's got a diesel job now. He's got yes, he does. Yes. Twenty-seven sixteen and uh, weekend eighty-seven thirty-eight. Correct. So, yes. Thank you. Oh, let's see. What can I get here? It's a Lock Sound twenty-one pin. Okay. Yeah. And uh, but it has no sound. You said? Yeah, it's just blank. Oh. It's blank. So you have to load the sound. You have to have a ESU programmer. Mm -hmm. One of these guys. And then you download the sounds from their website. Oh, okay. Okay. I think I'll just stick with the locomotive. I there are people I can deal with that can help me with this. Okay, but you still need the decoder. Yeah, I know. I know. Good to see you're still plugging away. Hey, Rick. Good to see you're still plugging away. Oh yeah. Driving from Port Jervis and Company. Oh, you got a lot it's of a good stuff. A little slower than usual. That's all. Well, same with me. <laughs> As long as you can keep coming here, that gives me hope for another five to ten years, <laughs> right? Oh, boy. This guy, Anchor Video, sells videos pretty much. All kinds of stuff. He's got Carson Home Video products now. That's a Philadelphia-based product. Yeah. Have you talked to Walter lately? Uh, his big boy 4012 spinning on the turntable here. This is a real eerie Lackawanna Mecca here. Uh, Jeep 35. And that's what made me think when I saw this. We had this stuff for a while, so I start seeing that. I almost died twice from your kidney failure. And that's when I said I need to start selling my stuff off. Because it would kill me to see my stuff thrown in this shit like that.
370 ACU. Followed by those damn dash nines. I may not be a GE fan, but I sure am a fan of this locomotive. The Spirit of the Union Pacific, SD70 ACE. Never surprises me when he's here. Everybody, this is the show to be. Ring the bell first on this Edaville Railroad. What kind of a whistle is on here? It sounds like a Baldwin whistle. This isn't a Baldwin engine, is it? No, so that's a, a, a main central whistle from the 470. Oh, let's see. <laughs> the engine it's an 040 has a whistle like a big boy it's loud oh boy you hit a bell it's gonna blow the whistle probably get to hear that whistle from the outside come on Better Living Center, and this one layout has several different heritage units. Jersey Central, the Erie, and Penn Central. And this is Mack Rail. They got some neat stuff here. It's an SD70M, the basic type with the flat radiator grills. Kansas City Southern SD70ACE. Chicago Northwestern Heritage Unit, SD70ACE. And I think this is an AC4400 CWCTE. They were the first uh, AC units with the flags and the wings on them. Michigan Interstate, I've never heard of that one. And these are BNSF varieties. SD40-2s, CSX SD40-2s, GP38-2, and S and Okay. So UP GP40 GP40-2. Looks cool. Well, I haven't been in the Mallory building yet, so here I am. There's a nice shirt. Looks like a sweatshirt with an EP5 on it. How much is that thing going for? They got all kinds of stuff. CNJ. I'm a little too old for that stuff. Uh, honoring first responders. Nice hats. I don't see any UP hats around here. Oh, these are Atherns. There's an SD60M Grand Trunk G38-2. Not sure what that one is. CSX. Indiana Railroad. SD70 M-2, I think they are. I don't know. the 60M of BNSF. Now DCC and sound, eh, a little beyond my budget. There's a more modern SD60M. Ah, this is cool. JOE 2020. Best day still lie ahead. Yes, sir. Okay. Here's some other models. GP38-2s. Well, the Dry Hill Model Railroad Club is one of the best ones here. Look at that Union Pacific DDA40X back there. And a GATX SD40-2. Well, I've been baptized. I finally bought a model railroad locomotive. So I better join that club that's locally. There's a Southern Heritage Unit. Here's 
the Dry Hills Mile Railroad. Got the cars on this baby. Forty-four cars. Yeah. We have a BNSF train carrying. Yeah, it's like seven thirty-seven fuselages. Sex train with some neat locomotives. Providence and Worcester Railroad is well represented back there. There are some huge layouts in this building. I think you can safely say that it's back to pre-pandemic Springfield train show. This is it's great to see. Last year the weather was bad and a lot of people didn't show up. This year the weather is very nice, warm, and people are showing up. It's a Sunday. It's usually less crowded than a Saturday, but there were definitely less people here last year on Sunday than is today. And here we have a train powered by a couple of Housatonic Railroad Jeeps, Jeep U35s. Uh, this layout is a Northeast Corridor Historical Society. Ah, Barack Obama engine, yeah, this is 642. Come a couple of Genesis, including one on the 50th anniversary scheme. This is one of those ALC 42s. Ah, oh, look at this. Except the AM7, you don't see those anymore. You don't see these either. Coming. Well, this is a layout in N scale. Not really into N scale too much. HO is about as small as I like it what I grew up with. A couple of CN Heritage units. Well, this layout is the Reading Technical and Historical Society. Got a Lehigh Valley train in here. Steamers, look at these things. Man, man. 6153, I love those CN484s. 
They were fast. I think they class U2. Check this out. Check this out. There's a couple of 900 class UP GP 40-2s. And there's an ET 44 AC. Transit F-59 PH. They still run a few of them. Metra has a few of them too. Hope to ride that in the spring. Well, here are some scale train models. NS Heritage units. Not all of them are NS, but pretty sharp. I'll overlook the fact that they're General Electric engines. All right, it's about four o'clock in the afternoon here. It's 46 degrees, very mild. For many of the Springfield trips that I've taken, this is probably, it may not be the mildest, but it's one of the mildest. Need to hear that whistle. So come back next year. It's always fun, always exciting, a lot to see.